we should be good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by. Tonight, I am super excited to be joined here by Tyler Carpenter, the man, the myth, the legend behind <laughs> the biggest hit of 2021 coming now. I'm calling it now on Webtoon. Chefs oh, gosh, let me mute myself here. Ah, there we go. Uh, of 2021 on Webtoon, it's coming for Laura Olympus. It's Chefs. It's Tyler Carpenter. Tyler, Hello. how are you doing, buddy? Good, good. I'm actually uh, I'm posting this in, in my in my Discord channel, so we'll get hopefully we'll get some people ah, smart, smart people smart. over there. But yeah, no, I'm I'm doing good. Um, oh, I'm excited to be here. Hopefully, uh, I think hopefully Nicholas comes as well. I think I I think he should be coming. I'll uh, I I know he just retweeted this when he saw it, so I'm hoping I'm hoping he comes out here soon. But um, let me. Uh, Pull this up here because this wonderful, wonderful deal on webtoons. <laughs> Let me see here. All right, and I'm bad with technology, but we got oh, this. Dude, you're good. You're good. Let's see here. Share screen, and we are going to. Yeah. All right. So there as you can see here, we have. Chefs, Culinary Heroes, Earth Force on Webtoons. Not only did he launch this past Friday, but he launched three, like three weeks worth of content at once. Right? I mean, on Webtoons. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Like the thing with web comics is, it's all about like your buffer, and it was really cool to just lose like three weeks worth of buffer (laughs) immediately. (laughs) immediately. (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah no i because yeah i just figured you know people want to binge if so I, let me give them three three immediately and then after that it's a good way to test test yeah, test the waters yeah i'm so i mean that's that's what they seem to be doing on like uh on like wandavision and and series now that they're launching on on streaming services it's not just everything at once now they're they're starting to get in the groove of pushing that out a bit so i, I think that's smart Oh yeah, like even like uh like big television shows. I remember when Twenty Four. I don't know if you ever watched the show Twenty Four. Oh yeah. Um, but like whenever a new season would, whenever a new season would pop up, they'd always launch the first night. What was always a two hour two uh two episode premiere, um, to really hook you. So yeah, I think it's the smart. same method. Very very smart. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, how how are you feeling? How are you feeling about? that first launch you feeling good feeling- yeah i'm feeling good you know it's funny that you pulled pull, pull up jay espin i've been talking with jay um i talked with jay about this and he gave me some pointers and gave me some tips um so it's just gonna be interesting um at the end of the day i'm i'm, I'm just gonna push i i, I make i'm wanted a I've been having, <laughs> I've been having for those of, like who've been watching my channel, and then like those who are like on Patreon, like you're on my Patreon, Paul. Like, yeah. I've just been having like a crisis this last mm-hmm. like two months, um, and so I've actually spent like the last two weeks not drawing, just well, I have been drawing, but like just like having fun and chilling, and so um, with chefs right now, I'm just like I'm just I'm I'm finishing up the book. I'm gonna. So what's going to happen actually is is I have up to I think the tenth or twelfth episode um, scheduled out at the moment, and so okay. right now I'm just col- and right now I'm coloring all the pages, and then based off of I guess maybe the I guess the reaction that I see, um, I might change up the story a bit. We'll still keep all the art and stuff. We'll just change some of the the text balloons from what I originally plant panned it so that, you know, maybe chefs just becomes this one shot, uh, superhero thing. Um, mm. who knows? I've got, a I, I, I did a post on Patreon, uh, last night and I've been just really just like laying on my couch back here and just, um, trying to figure out what my next move is as a creator and trying to figure out, you know, what makes me happy? What, what, what do I really want to do? And so I think, I kind of hinted at what I was wanting to do in my in that Patreon post, and I kind of talked about it on Twitter as well today. But right now, though, like I am, I want to give chefs all the love I can because I, I still love the story, I still love the characters, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I I got to say, I know I've said it before on Twitter, but genuinely, if – so Tyler has on Patreon, and I'm going to share his Patreon here in just a second in the chat. On his Patreon, he has a series called The Broken Creator. It is It is worth – his already his price is only just one dollar right now. By the way, it's just one dollar <laughs> for his Patreon. But I would follow him for the Broken Creator series alone, like just that. I I do at five. I'd go at five. It is genuinely worth that by itself. So just for anything else, it's just, just to hear just to, just to hear me vent. Yeah, no, <laughs> because because I think I've. I've not been shy about it at all. You're a creator who I have great respect for. Bump Back, Sun Child, any of my comic projects would not exist without enjoying your video, like watching you on YouTube, discovering you on YouTube. I appreciate like, that. It, none, of, none of my comic side of my, create, my creative projects would exist without you. So I'm, I'm definitely a huge fan, and it's, it's cool to see a hero be human and be vulnerable. So... Yeah, man, because let me tell you, it sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. being a creator, uh, it, it sucks. And, um, and uh, I mean, I... Oh. I think Tyler's freezing up again. I don't, I don't know if this is on my end or his end, but that is okay. Um, I will stall for a bit. I don't mind doing that. Um, so, just let me, uh, while... We're waiting for him. I'm just going to shout out everyone who is in the chat currently. Ichthys, my friend, thank you so much for showing up. Greatly appreciate you, buddy. Uh, I agree. It is a super cool cast who is on the panel tonight, having both Tyler from Draw and Talk, Chefs, whatnot. Okay, there he is. He's back. And we got Man, I don't know what I don't know what's going on. But uh, sorry about that. You were saying... Oh no! You're good. I don't even know. I I feel like I said like a bunch of things and then I think I <laughs> dipped out. I don't know what's going on with my internet. I gotta call them and be like, "Yo, I pay a lot of money every month for this crap to work." <laughs> um, no, I I, I I I was just saying I appreciate those words that you said to me. Uh, yeah, I don't have it all figured out, and I guess that the Patreon does what that exclusive series is for is just to say like, "Hey, I don't have it all figured out." Um, I even tweeted out today saying like, "Man, I like have, I like went through some crap already in like the last like." two months like 2021 was supposed to be like my year like i remember yeah. like this is my year and i was like it's not my year <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, no it's been fun to figure things out um as a creator and chefs you know maybe it just be maybe instead of a series it just becomes a one shot it just becomes the next stepping stone into my into um my journey as a creator totally totally i definitely get that um i definitely get where you're going with that and and i hope i hope it gets the full run that you're wanting for it um, as a, as a fan of you and as a fan of your, your work in general, I'm pulling up my Google doc here, as you can see on my screen share, um, always got to keep my questions ready, but oh, yeah. you believe it or not, part of, part of the conversation tonight is actually inspired by uh, this character who's on the screen here, but we'll uh, wait just a second to get into that because we are bringing in, Nicholas Mueller. Oh, Thanks he's here. So much for stopping hey. by. Yeah. That guy. I wore that. my glasses. I wore my glasses so I could like <laughs> fill the next spot for for a bit. <laughs> I'm as blind uh, as a bat. I don't. I don't know if you want this. This is. Uh, how does, how's it going, you? <laughs> doing cool all right, man. Good to see you, Nick. How you doing, buddy? I'm I'm exhausted, but I'm hanging hanging. Nicholas, from. that T-shirt you're wearing. Do you know who drew that? Are you Tim Lim? Are you freaking kidding me? He Tim Lim posted that piece of artwork and he go he was at a he was at like a Target or something Are you and it was kidding me? and he was like this he goes it's really cool to still see um, my artwork on um t t-shirts. My wife bought this for me. I had no clue. Yeah, was, well I mean I yeah. <laughs> um um excuse me. Wow. Excuse me. Why didn't you just come in here screaming that Demon Hunter Raven chapter 3 is over so gay? Okay. Why didn't you come in here and just scream that? Are you oh, kidding? Oh, is it really? I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah. I, I need to do uh, some checking. Uh, congrats, big man. Congratulations to Nick here. Oh, for having 
over seven thousand dollars on Demon Hunter Raven Chapter Three. I, I, I try not to celebrate too fast because then I'll have like a slew of people that cancel out of nowhere. So it's like <laughs> preemptive. Like that was yesterday. I lost like quite a few backers and then I slowly climbed back up. But um, oh my god, I'll celebrate after the campaign's done when everything's <laughs> locked and loaded. True, understandable. Well, that's pretty cool. That dude, that's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, oh, man, that's. Um, I need time to process that. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose my backing though today, and then you're gonna see my my rebacking. <laughs> oh, gee. yeah, yeah. I'm Thanks, gonna keep Tyler. Just long enough for it to get down to the wire. I did yeah. have someone that did that. They they had an issues with a card, and they knew it was gonna bounce on them, so they had to re redo it on a different card. So I saw like three to four different pledges. Oh, it's by hilarious. Them. And I was like, what's going on here? That's hilarious. <laughs> well, they, they, they told me what was going on. I was just like, yeah, I understand. Gave me a little mini heart attack on the side. <laughs> <laughs> what are you What are you pledging now? Uh, well, th thank you both for, for showing up. I greatly appreciate this. I, uh, I, you know, I respect both of you as creators and as people being, I think, good ambassadors for the indie indie community of for comics so i i greatly appreciate that i feel like i have two powerhouses here in one of my first real comic videos on the channel um Boy, thank so you. i appreciate it i appreciate it and tonight's discussion is really about to be uh, is really supposed to be a deeper level look at powers outside of something that's just cool and fun and as I was telling Tyler when I saw you pop in, Dairy King is actually one of uh, the characters that inspired this because I love limitations mm. and powers. And since he needs dairy to sort of keep his powers up, as a Brandon Sanderson fan, the second law of Sanderson's rules for magic is limitations over powers. And so having this character who is incredibly powerful but needs that sort of constant consumption le can lead to some dramatic tension, some great moments, and, and things like that. And that really got my, my mind running. And since I wanted to talk about Sun Child's powers anyway in that video I did earlier today, I just figured, you know, having you here, Tyler, and having Nick here to talk about uh, Raven and Violet and their powers and the powers of uh, Coven and stuff like that. I thought it would be fun to take a deeper dive in those sort of areas. So um, I guess to, to start out, how important are powers to your world, to your creation? Feel free, you whoever want, wants you want to, to go start first. first. I, you guys are all going to be severely disappointed when you find out that I didn't think of any of that stuff through and I just designed them and I was like, <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> And then people started asking questions. I was like, I don't know. That is, you know, that's funny because I was also going to give a disappointing answer. Um, what, like, like, right like right before I did Chefs, I wrote out a bunch of other superhero stories. And what I realized, I was like, what I realized was, I don't know a lot of superpowers. I yeah. was like, super strength. I, I could list off like a couple that like Superman had. So I remember Googling and I have it somewhere in my sketchbook. I just like listed out like 50 different like superpowers and i was like okay what can i do what can i assign what to like which what can <laughs> i assign to each of these superheroes but then also you want to like give them like the right names like the mm -hmm. superheroes the right names based off of mm -hmm. their power yeah and it was just so hard so i was like screw it dairy king he gets his, he gets super strength from milk perfect done <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh first time seeing tyler with glasses he looks like he came to this panel after ted talks lectures yeah i don't um i don't normally wear these i normally wear my shades but um these are these are blue light yeah it's just because i've been i've been staring staring at a screen all day and i've been getting headaches so those are the worst type of headaches because it's all eye strain and everything yeah, exactly oh it's sure. disappointing i have no idea about superpowers it's just like yeah like uh, like i'll say this about dairy king um brad ashworth pencil for life he was like hey i want to draw something so tell me about dairy king's powers like what can he do and i'm like yeah, i mean yeah <laughs> what can he do and, yes. and, he, and he was like reading he goes is that a milk force field i went i guess and, <laughs> um and um i just like while i was making the comic like he doesn't really use his powers until like the very like last couple pages and so i was like what do i do what do i do and i was like oh he has a sword but it's made out of like <laughs> it's made out of like milk and they're yes. like how does that work i went 
he can do it. Like, he can do it. <laughs> and they're like, well, how how can he do it? And I was like, well, he dr- he drank some milk, so he can do it. So, um, it's funny that you bring up also Brandon Sanderson. He like lives like over there. Um, homeboy, homeboy, so rich that he bought a, he bought the house next to him, so he can just ride in that house. Oh my And I, I just want to say real quick for those of you who do or don't know Brandon Sanderson. He posts all of his college lectures that he does for free on YouTube. Uh, oh. Great resource to uh, improve your storytelling. Just go, that go, go! You for like, I see, I see his books. I'm like, screw that, man. That's a thousand pages. I don't have time for that. And they take so long to get going. So <laughs> long. Uh, but yeah, I guess to answer the question, with I think it's just, I think you just figure it out with the powers if you're not really like invested in it. Mm. It kind of like comes as you go, but I, I think I think that's the hard part though. Is is you can spend so much time thinking about all of these little nuanced individual pieces, and then when you finally put it out there, and if it doesn't hit a chord, then it's like, what do you do afterwards? You've spent so much time formulating all these ideas, and then if it falls flat, you kind of have to then restructure the idea. So at some mm-hmm. point, you're kind of just collectively creating a, a, a like this weird amalgamation of stuff, and you're like, if it works, it works. I'm going with it, and I mean. That's a good point. There's this yeah. there's this girl who lives around here. Um, she's a really talented artist, and so when I entered the scene, she entered the scene at the same time, and she was just like taken in by the art community scene here. Cause they're like, mm. "Oh my gosh, she's so awesome!" And I was like, "Uh, I'm cool too." And they're like, "No, you're not." Um, <laughs> and so and so she had this really cool concept for a comic, <laughs> and she kickstarted the first like twelve pages. It like just it just it did really well for her first mm. Kickstarter, um, but she hasn't done anything since. And I remember mm. I had her come over to my house for a podcast, and um, it's somewhere out there in the ether. And sh- and I was asking, you know, so what are your plans with this? And she was like, well, right now I'm working on like the world building, and then I'm going to work on the languages, and then Ooh. I'm going to work on the different items. And I was like, and basically it was like, yeah, I'm working on everything but the actual story and the actual comic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. at that, and now it's been six years, and I found uh. out I was I found out I was tabling next to her once and i was just like oh i'm tabling next to her i know she only has that same 12 page comic from five years ago so uh let me just pull out my graphic novels and my <laughs> um but yeah like it's kind of like what nicholas said you you can as a creator create all this random stuff and if you're not if you just you might forget about the story and you not, might not even be able to use some of that stuff yeah yeah and i i, I agree and that actually already sort of answers a question i had uh, for later on where you think creators go wrong with how they handle the idea of these powers and and whatnot and it, it you know making them too much of a priority or or whatnot things like that because it, it seems like we get wrapped up in the wrong things and it, I, I would butcher the line if I tried to quote it from spider-man but if your character's not interesting without the powers, or if your if your story is not interesting without the Tolkien level world building, yeah. uh, then then maybe your story isn't actually, you know, there I, I yet. Can and kind of better answer that. that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut no, you off. You're good, Nick. Go ahead. I'm a jerk tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. 7,000, folks? Go refund your this money, what man. what 7K yeah. does yeah. to a man. I'm important now, so listen to me. So, um, <laughs> so, um, I think there's actually, though, a little nuance, though, that comes with the ability to not display every power set right off the bat. I mean, like, Goku didn't start out with Super Saiyan 3 right off the top. You know, like, he, we, we got to watch him get more established. And, of course, it's probably gone too far. We're at the Super Saiyan God level, and it's like, what, what's going on now? So I live for Dragon Ball Z <laughs> slander. <laughs> but I, I, I love using the, the idea of, like, the Witchblade. When she first came onto the scene, you didn't know what that thing did, just that it had this weird... Uh, merging power over the person and what it could do was unexplainable and it had this sort of mystical rel- uh, feeling to it and I kind of took the same approach with the the raven, the, the light stone artifact and, yeah. and, and the way that if, if, it, if it resonated with people if it hit people in the right way then I could go further on and create more uh, dynamic ways to, to show it off and stuff but to start it off as a complete mystery and then have people ask questions that I couldn't answer it's like okay I gotta think of that now but um, I think like what Tyler and you guys were saying, like if you don't start with a character first, the power sets mean nothing. Um, those are kind of just eye candy at the beginning, which is fun. It's fun, right? And and again, the, I I two things that I will reference too much are Brandon Sanderson and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. 
mm. uh, two wildly different things. But you know, another another Sanderson's law is uh, err on the side of awesome, right? And so mm. it, it's it, cool. Cool stuff is cool stuff, right? If, what if you are able to set up an action set piece in your in your comic or work, whatnot that is that is fun to watch, awesome. But as the last Harry Potter movie or the last Hobbit movie can show you that you know, all all action without any substance is, ends up being boring. It, yeah. it, it means nothing. Well, it's, uh, it's it's kind of like when Captain America in, in the Avengers movie goes to Tony Stark and he's like. Like without the suit, who are you? And he, mm-hmm. and, and he goes billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. And so, like, you, like yeah, the suit is cool, but are you like? Is your character? Does your what's your character without their powers? Right. Um, who like what is their personality? I think that's that's way more important. Yeah, it, like it's it's cool that Goku can do the spirit bomb, but. You know what else can he do? You know, scream he, really he, loud. And he can scream really right loud. He can shirk off his husband responsibilities. It's a terrible father, but, but he, he does have the power of friendship on his side. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I. By the way, I just I, I finished like two weeks ago Dragon Ball Z and all three hundred twenty-seven cool. chapters. I, besides the Majin Buu saga, I love I loved it. Yeah, Majin Buu took. A weird turn but yeah and, and, no, yeah no shame, and, no shame at all and then he was shame. he like turned super saiyan 3 well that's another thing with like i guess powers is like going back to dragon ball z you you cut you they you you heard about the super saiyan in the manga they they name drop super oh this, could yeah. he be the super saiyan like for a really long time so you knew oh that there was this ability this power level that could be unlocked and Mm -hmm. so when he finally did it you're like oh this is a massive achievement and then you find out oh he can unlock it the uh, even more to the (laughs) a a second way like wow and then in the i don't know how i remember in the tv show it was like five episodes of his hair growing out but in the in the manga it was a panel he goes vegeta's like what you can be super saiyan 3 he goes oh yeah check it out and he was super saiyan 3 for like two seconds in the manga so i I, for writing I, i think you know, not knowing, like, teasing your reader, like you kind of like kind of like what Nicholas has done with like the the the. It's, oh crap! It's called the light artifact, the light stone. Yeah, just the light stone. The I'm, light stone. I'm, I'm basic as hell. But <laughs> like he's teased what like it what he's teased what it does. He's teased, but he's also teasing you know what it can do, and because of mm-hmm. the reception, he it can go a lot mm-hmm. further. Um, it can go a lot further with with maybe some explanation, maybe without explanation. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Supernatural though kind of allows you to play in that sort of field because it's then you can oh it's magic or it's, oh, it's got for mystical sure. feels so, um, but I, I always kind of like was it that Grant Morrison saying where it's just like comics were meant for kids and once we started over explaining everything, we, we we started like not grasping the rather aspects like he said like you know oh how does Superman fly um, who's who's pumping the tire or the yeah. airs in Batman's Batmobile it's like nobody it's a kids it's a kids thing. Yeah, we, we forgot the basic element of that. These are for kids, and then grown adults came in and said, "Yeah, you know, you know, I don't think Aquaman can really talk like that. I think he has to use a different frequency." And we got all nerdy and, and in the ruined. wrong way. Well, also, I like Demons Volume Two did really well, and then Demons Volume Three did really bad. And um, I was um, one guy, his name, um, one creator, I won't say his name. Well, one creator who got it, he said, "I didn't like that you didn't explain your villain's power level." And I, went, oh. and I went, what do you mean? He goes, well, he just came on the scene, and if he flicked his finger, um, like, people's necks would crack, or, like, they they get blood. And I was like, yeah, I, I thought it was cool. And he goes, yeah, but, like, you didn't, like, explain, like, how did he get so powerful? Like, why? What were the elements? I was just like, um, he's, I said he was, like, the third strongest, like, devil. And they're like, yeah, but, wh-? like, what's that? Like, do you, and he wanted all this stuff. I was like, man. He wanted like, the Game of Thrones history. And I was like, I yeah. just. I, I don't I didn't really want to explain the power like he want like what could what can go against him what's the counter and it, it kind of took away the fun but but you're right some people really want that to really understand the the system well, that, that can be different though because then you could play it off like a Thanos sort of threat like this guy came in and he just devastated it was like then you just understand the the I think it's an atmosphere the way that we approach the character and again I've never read the book I can't go and comment no, no, how you good. approached it um, cause even for me, it's just like writing antagonists is hard because to me, it's like, you can blow the socks off everyone, but then, well, is he the same as this guy? Does he, you know, who, how, how do you do, how, how do you 
differentiate these different characters and their power levels because then you start entering into the overpowered zone. Like, um, and we get into that kind of, again. We're doing Dragon Ball Z. But here. that's the Dragon oh, Ball Z problem, yeah, though. It is, yeah, it's the Dragon Ball Z problem. Yeah. Who can beat Goku? I think power scaling Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley would absolutely destroy any wizard. You could pick the worst wizard in Harry Potter and he would just wipe the floor with Goku. Anyway, <laughs> um, I know I think power scaling is a huge, huge issue. Mm. And that is, again, why I, and again, excuse me for my references, I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Because you have, like in part three, you have a world conquering antagonist who is going up against you know this this team of people with really strong powers and the very next season the hero who beats that world conquering uh enemy struggles against someone who is just a serial killer living in a small town because of the power different it's a different power set it's it's in jojo's they're always focusing on how can I beat my beat my opponent in an intellectual way instead of I'm just going to punch harder than mm. my opponent punches? You yeah. Know, how do I beat this problem where every time I'm close to solving the case, everyone explodes and time restarts? <laughs> okay. So so for me in writing Bump Back and writing Sunchild stories, I'm thinking of how can I make power scaling not a factor as much as possible, right? Event at some points and in some cases, it's just going to be a thing. But if I can, if I can avoid power creep from the get go, I'm going. I'm going mm-hmm. to do. I'm going to do that as much as possible. You know, I think that even enters into the Superman question, where people are just like, you know, Superman's too strong. His stories get boring because you know the only thing that can defeat him is a kryptonite laced something or something around that sort of idea. And then you have to kind of forego a lot of maybe basic things that like you would use to write Batman up against in terms of like mm. a bullet could kill him. Like he's he's very um, human in that nature. So you have to think of like the weaknesses. And I've always heard that said that that's what they a lot of people like Marvel because their their characters with weaknesses. Like there's some sort of form or element that could take them down, and they are are, are grounded to a sense. Yeah. So I think that's even just like asking yourself like what could take down my character, who can. Um, besiege them in the best way um i i think that's always kind of a good question like for me when i'm when i'm looking at raven i'm just kind of like how do i not make him the most powerful character in the room but yet still uh kind of use like the captain marvel analogy in a sense of like he's he's got this bursting amount of energy pulsing through him but he doesn't know how to use it it's not used properly so he's kind of misguided in its use but once he does figure it out how do i not end up being like this overpowering menace that everyone's just like well we don't even need to show up what you know like when superman shows up to the justice league like why are we why are we here yeah like, yeah like why is batman there that's why i can't read justice league <laughs> just, batman's my favorite fun. character and i'm like <laughs> why, are you, why are you here well john dillard when i was talking with him about the buckler and he was like yeah buckler's really strong and i went okay how strong he goes um in his like main form he can go up to four four guys and he says mm. that's that's he goes i've written it out he can only go up to f- max four guys before he can start before he really starts taking damage and then when he goes into like the buckler form he can go he can take up he can take out as as like i think a, like a limit of like at least 10 before he starts struggling and so with with dairy king i was i realized i was like gosh i have this really strong character like, well, I, I could just make him stronger than everyone else. So, I mean, that's why in Breadsticks Unlimited, we see the Butter Monster just, like, just trash Dairy King um, and and whatnot because Dairy King was just being cocky at the time. So his personality is, like, one of the, his, one of Dairy King's weaknesses is he can be a little too cocky and underestimate his opponent. Um, even in the, in the Pasa La Vista arc that we're doing right now, um he he fights he fights someone he and he 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 gets the trash kicked out of him he fights another he might he fights the main villain for the first time gets the absolute trash kicked out of him and i think when you show your character getting beat up yeah it it makes them go oh they are vulnerable they're not as good as i might think so when they do um so when they do like win 
um, you can really see that progress. That's what the reader sees. I th- every Power Rangers episode is the exact same. Power Rangers, like, new villain, a uh, new villain meets the Power Rangers. The Power Rangers get their, the crap kicked out of, like, get the crap beat out of them. They talk. They figure out what the problem is. They go beat up. They go beat up the villain. They beat him, but then get this. The villain can turn into a giant, so they have to get the Megazord out. I, I want to stop you right there for a second because now, now talking about subverting <laughs> people's expectations is, is you come to expect that every single episode, like, a formulatic. Man, they beat the guy. He turns into a giant kaiju. Megazord. Megazord beat him. Repeat. Five episodes later. But when that Green Ranger came in and he kicked everyone's butt three episodes in a row, when I was six years old and that happened, that was my a big little, deal. That was a big deal. You're like, this dude went into the Megazord and trashed all of them. He kicked them out of it. Yeah. He came in and just kicked all their butts. And we were talking about that at school and everything. We're like, I don't know what's going to happen after this. We got 10 more episodes. Is he just going to be, is it just going to be him now? Like, it blew our minds. Oh, that's hilarious. But like, that's like kind of like the formula, though, for your characters. You yeah. should. You should have them get the cra- the, cra- the crap kicked out yes. of them. But the yes. problem, though, kind of that with that what Nicholas brought up, though, is kind of like the Superman and Batman problem. Like Superman, he's supposed to be the strongest living thing on Earth. Who's beating him? Like, and Literally why are they- everyone? Because yeah, and why are they beating him? <laughs> um, in the latest issue of Batman, I, I haven't I stopped reading Batman, but I saw a picture. Of, I saw a video. I saw. A, I still follow the Illustrator and this random guy is boxing bruce wayne and the art's oh, super great the, um, the ghost maker yeah the ghost maker and yeah, but i'm like yeah. why is the ghost maker able to outfight batman he's the greatest martial artist the greatest detective so he's supposed to be he's supposed to be a more ruthlessly trained version of bruce is what i read oh. is that he's done all the same training but he's done it before him but he took it further oh there you go so he's like an he's like the absolute version like so, what if bruce went too far so then what so then when so he'll eventually become a villain he'll eventually become he'll eventually go too far and then batman will have to like level up um it's just hard for it was just hard i'm like gosh i've been reading batman for freaking five years and this hit homeboy still can't take out this clown but oh yeah that that kind of comes down to the to not one singular viewpoint or vision being followed through yes is that each time someone steps off although you can say he's probably continuing off of scott snyder's sort mm-hmm. of visionary past since they've been so uh, integral to each other's stories and, and, and working off of each other. Since I think Scott Snyder is the one that mentored him and brought yeah, him yeah. into work. Yeah, brought him in. Yeah, so Tiverian? Ty, 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 Tinian. Tinian is, is, is very much uh, uh, continuing off of those story points. But again, it's that non singular vision of, of multiple voices coming in that one minute you've got the Grant Morrison Bat God, and then you've got the Tom King Soy Boy version. And so it, it just and then you've got what the old 80s so version pa- the power story. levels in dc and marvel they're all over the place right um i started reading one piece paul you read one piece right you're reading i it. i'm on the skypea arc okay so like i don't know where i am and at this point i just kind of flip through at some points just to look at the art because i'm like gosh <laughs> this is taking too long but yeah. like oda sensei he i love that we call him oda sensei it's, sensei, like it's such yeah, a it's like- form of respect um look at tom king but we go oda sensei um (laughs) but like he kind of with his power level he created this power system of like the the devil fruits yes Mm. yes and uh and he created rules like they were like you could only have one you could only have one devil fruit and then uh, unless um, and then you died but then he broke it for one character who had the ability of two devil fruits but he still set that rule though um, yes which are rules important part, yes i'm so happy that you said that rules should be extremely extremely important um i think i think lemon here three of the most um, most boring characters in sequential art for me are the hulk batman and goku mm. Shame, because I, I like two of the three of them i know <laughs> i i, yeah, like I agree with, i agree They're with you fun, but Hulk getting madder to hit things harder to me is boring. Yeah. Batman knowing just what he needs to know in order to <laughs> save the day is boring to me from yeah. my just from my perspective. And Goku screaming louder and getting a new hair color like every angsty teenager um, is uh, is boring to me. I, I can respect the storytelling outside of those factors. But but for me, I I want to see them. I want to see a story where they just straight up lose. 
fully in the end. Not not like part of the way, like they do in every sort of story where the the villain wins the first and second fight. But you know, I, I want I want pure loss. I, w- I want to see those limits because for me, and and just like when with like the characters in Bump Back or or Sun Child, I think watching watching a character who who is weaker or watching a hero have to cheat, quote unquote, cheat to win against a much stronger opponent is much more entertaining to me than knowing they're going into the fight and going to be stronger by the end of the fight than the, mm. than the opponent, which is very much the anime way of sort of tackling every fight. I, I like those limitations. I like, I like seeing characters be pushed to the brink in order to win and not just in a way that is pure plot. Like, I, I want it to feel natural and organic to the story. I hope that makes sense and not just rambling. But. Wrong. No. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> Too I long, didn't read. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a lot of... So, as a Batman fan, um, <laughs> is a lot of people hated Batman versus Superman. It's not a perfect film. Um, and a lot of people are like, man, like, Batman kills all these people. And then in the nightmare sequence, he, like, is gunning down people and... A lot of people are like, well, that's not Batman. But one thing I really liked about that was, I was like, this isn't like a new, this isn't a young Batman. Like, we've seen young Batman. This is a Batman who he's suffered. His his mansion is burned down. He's lost Robins. Um, in the nightmare sequence, he's lost everything. And so he's now has to, he's now has to give up who he is. He's essentially lost himself as a, as, as a person. And he kind of like, yeah, has to cheat. Um, pull out a gun i will say though one time the one time i didn't like it when they when a character cheated was tom king um tom king at when when batman and bane were to fight batman bane's like you can't use any of your gadgets batman and so batman's like he's like fine and all of a sudden but then catwoman's like but i can and then catwoman (laughs) was the one who beat up bane and I was like, okay, well, this is the the title says I was reading a Batman comic. <laughs> Evidently, I'm not. Um, so, I, I do agree. I do agree that um, having someone just keep leveling up, it can, it can kind of hurt your story. There's got to be a reason. There's got to yeah. be a good reason why. Yeah. Or or like or like they find a way. Like they find a new way. Or maybe, maybe they don't win. Maybe they yes. they don't win. Did yes. you ever play Last of Us too? I not no not my kind of game. Okay, but I played I, Last of Us too. I stayed up till four thirty a.m. My wife found me like in our living room crying because oh. I was just. She's like, "You said you were gonna go to bed." I'm like, "Let's, let's finish the game." Um, I'll just spoil it. I'm spoilers. Turn the house off. I'm gonna spoil for you. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happens? Oh yeah, so like you 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 the whole game you're like I gotta kill this girl Abby. She killed Joel, and by the at the end of the fight you're, you're at the at the end of the game you're fighting each other and like you're like gosh this is like my time I'm gonna freaking f this this woman up and in the end you don't f her up you don't she doesn't die she goes on with her life you your character's lost three fingers your character she can't your character can't play the guitar that was like the last thing that like connected her and the her loved one together and it was a really depressing ending it was so depressing i didn't feel victorious but i it made me really like reflect on the character's journey yeah and and i was like you know what you're right i didn't win my character didn't win but gosh did they go through a hell of a time and so did i Mm mm-hmm and I think that would have that was more me- that that was more memorable than had I had I won, like every other story. Absolutely, and you know what's so funny about that? And and I haven't watched the show, so forgive me here. But oh, it's a it's a video game. Well, uh, yeah, to to relate to that, um, oh, yeah. people give uh, Damon Lindelof so much crap for Lost and his his comment about it being more about the journey oh, than the people. than the destination. And and I agree. I agree, right? It, it it should that journey there took you to that to that emotional level more so than just that super satisfying ending that would have had you jumping out of your seat and pumping your fist. Look I, at I, um look at endgame. That. Look at endgame. They might have won, but gosh, did we like you lost Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't have to yeah. do that. Like Iron Man could have been could have stayed could I didn't think Iron Man was gonna die. 
Um, and I, th- I, th- I thought Steve Rogers was going to die, but yeah, like, same here. yeah, but seeing Iron Man die, like just the, so you see that's like the character development from like Iron Man one. He's just this asshole to finally an end game. He's gone full circle where he's not, he's not cocky. He's giving his life for, for everyone. He says, I am, I am Iron Man. And, uh, I mean, if you guys watched in the theaters, it was, oh, that was big. It was the best word to say for me. I think is reverent. It was quiet. I felt it was quiet. It was more quiet than a church mm-hmm. than it was on church on Sunday. Mm. Like yeah. everyone was quiet, and everyone kind of just went. We just followed this guy for the last ten years, and like this was his character journey, and that was better than him winning. If he that was better than him winning yeah. and being like I did it. It was wow. He he did it. I'm gonna cry. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they set you up for a really cool follow through, and that was a ten year journey of watching his movies. That that it, like when you said when you started with that first movie, you got to follow his journey all the way to that point. And even mm-hmm. Steve, even with Steve, you got to see a different sort of um, send off for him, where it's this, just like this idealistic Captain America who's like, "This is the way." Yeah. He breaks the law. Yeah. Then he 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 basically has, and I always liked when he had to fight his version in the Avengers who's mm. very extremely idealistic who hasn't had the betrayal <clears throat> of Winter Soldier and the Hydra um, you know sort of sabotage going on in the background where he became distrustful of his own peers and, and government and had to go on the run and then you you know the Civil War so, so th- there was a journey process in between there like I, I like how Kevin Feige said that like Endgame is also just kind of us doing a send-off we're going back to our it's, it's gonna be a greatest hits even like we're going back to those moments and we're going to relive some of those. And, and the way that they I'm, – I'm a, I'm a Marvel shill at times. So uh, the, the way that they kind of encapsulated all of those moments in a 10-year journey to um, bring you to that final moment um, I think is, is how you tell an ending. But also they, they could do that. They had the ability to. But also I think they knew that if they didn't, the way that they set up Infinity War, that they were into such a big um, send-off that there was, there was too much writing on it. Um, and and was it Game of Thrones? I've I, I've I've never watched it, but I've heard so many people just disappointed by the lack of. Um, the last season was terrible. It's yeah, so, like, so bad. Like it, 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 from what it sounds like, it, it it went up to such a great crescendo that, however, they ended it, they didn't land it like anywhere close. But that that's where like Endgame though. Endgame, I, I don't even I don't even consider Endgame a movie. I consider it an event. Yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's this massive event, and I think, and I think when you are creating characters in some kind of way you should you should figure out like their beginning and where you want to take them yeah mm-hmm. like like um I, I work for a book publisher and we we had to read one of his books and everyone was like gosh the main character is so bad like we hate i hate this person i was like yeah, yeah guys flip to the last chapter though he's totally different and they're mm-hmm. like they're like oh i guess like that makes it worth it you want to see that change i mean I don't. My, I've not, I haven't watched Naruto. My brother watched every episode of Naruto, and I remember him knocking on my door, and he's like crying. <laughs> and I'm like, "What's wrong? Like, what happened? Did someone break up with you?" He goes, "I just watched the last episode of Naruto," and I went, "Oh." He goes, "This is, this is like my brother watched Naruto when like I think Naruto. I don't know how old Naruto is. Like when he starts out, he's pretty young, probably around the same yeah. age as like my brother. And my brother basically went through like the last the next ten years." with naruto and so when he saw the final episode and like during the punches there'd be fine there'd be flashbacks of like kid naruto punching and um you really if you if you if you created a character right you get you can get those moments Um, yeah you can get those emotional moments totally totally sorry if we derailed your your questions paul oh you have nothing up (laughs) i'm i'm here with two people who i greatly respect trust me this is one of the best nights of my life, just getting to hang oh. out with you guys. So trust me. Um, we're, all, we're all friends. We're all equal here, Paul. There's, <laughs> heck yeah, yeah. People are going to read your son child story, and they're just going to be like, why is this guy not out there more? So just which, give it time. Give which, it time. We have, a, we have a related story that will hopefully you know, soon be, be available for all of you. I, I wish uh, people could hear the after about. talk on some of these things. Like when we get off stream, <laughs> the amount of things that we drop, we're like, okay, this is what we're doing next. We're like, oh, did you know I'm doing this next? Like, 
the amount of stuff we say off stream is so much better sometimes than the on stream stuff. I, I, get, I get a chance to work with an incredibly talented artist and colorist here on my next short story coming up. It's very exciting. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it's so funny you say that, Nicholas, because it's true. Because, like, on stream, you want to be like, so this is what we're doing in the next, like, month or two. And then off yeah. stream, so my five-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting each other hyped. You're like, oh, yeah. boy, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I know what you're talking about, Paul. I'm, 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 I'm excited to uh, see the fruition of this. Yeah, it, it's going to be fun. I know it probably makes absolutely zero sense, even to Nick, who is who is a part of Sunchild's creation. But, I have uh, a few ideas, but uh, it's it's very exciting. So and 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 that's another thing that sort of brought this all up. How how do how do so to to bring it back here in the in the last few minutes of this? How how would you say power creation on on your part as a creator has influenced your world? Has influenced your story decisions? Um, I know, I know. Some of the, some of the conversation has said, "Well, you know, this sounds cool. We'll just sort of do this," or, or you know, sort of word vomit on paper turned into <laughs> these awesome characters. Um, how how would you say since then, it has influenced your work, these stories that you're telling? Because even even just like, I mean, I I don't want to spoil anything from chapter two, but just. Even that little bit of power that Violet shows, like, mm. is really interesting to me. Even though it's not a, it's not necessarily, I'm going to say, a combat power. Um, it was interesting to see. It made me intrigued in the character and watch her movements to see if that sort of thing that I'm trying not to spoil, but spoiling <laughs> a little bit, uh, related at all to the greater character. So, mm. how how have how have these powers and these abilities and these artifacts that are influencing your story how how have they influenced your story yeah so the i think your story yeah so i think talking about earlier saying that like at some point you're just kind of throwing stuff out there but then you start getting feedback from people and they want to know like why did that happen um and you almost need to be able to anticipate some of those moments uh so i think it's good to have somewhat of a general vague idea of like what you want to do like all right, he's going to shoot lightning out of his hands. I'll figure out the rest later. Um, but then once you start getting further in the story, you need to have something of a game plan. Um, like when we're talking about, let's go back to Marvel. Let's talk about the Infinity Stones. Each one of those had to have a purpose and they had to be regulated to a certain idea or even going back to talking about Oda and the Devil Fruit. Like there had to be rules set in place. So mm -hmm. I think you can really screw yourself over if you don't start coming up with... Um, sort of a direct narrative and, and guiding yourself in that because then you start having continuity issues because you you yourself are writing it you're creating it but then the person that's reading it is is digesting it they're taking yeah. it in it, it's like it's their gospel and, and they want to understand it all so when they start seeing inconsistencies because you didn't plan it out well or you misjumbled or you screwed up on a particular thing they're going to catch it before you do and it can ruin their reading experience because they're they're invested you're creating, you might be, you're invested in a whole entire different manner. Um, like I was talking earlier, like how many forms can Goku through, go through? Like there's gets to a point where the power scaling gets annoying and it becomes superficial to the story. So um, like what Ifus is saying, uh, like Violet's powers are very intuitive to what she is and what her capabilities are. And um, I'll, I'll just say it right off the bat without spoiling everything is she has the ability to create um, so in, in the Demon Hunter world, we have the, the site that is unseen, the world that is outside of it. And, and, and that's how demons manifest is they are very much um, not of the physical plane, but of the spiritual plane. But once they've gained enough spiritual pressure, they can start interacting with the spirit, with the physical plane. Um, and, and those that can see into the spirit side of it have things called the pneuma eyes, which is Greek for spirit. Um, so they are able to um, pass through that and see everything. And that's what that's what hunters are. They they have to be able to have that eye, otherwise they can't hunt. They can't partake in this. Well, there's a few that have the ability to, um, kind of, uh, like, uh, create illusions to the eye. They can they can make something appear that isn't there, but they can distort the spiritual plane around them. It takes a hard amount of concentration, and, and it can go very wrong. But they can create somewhat of an illusion uh, um, in that sort of sense. Um, 
so so you kind of have to start playing with rules and, and and figuring out you know is there is there ways to break it um and i think that's and when you get into the shonen mangas uh, uh like dragon ball and that is is once you start not defining the rules or or you come you get the trump cards i think it was Yu-Gi-Oh was really perfect on it like ha you didn't know i was gonna play this hand and you're like i didn't even know you had that option when when was that coming into play yeah um card games are notorious for having rules so um I'm, and I'm you, sure and you go the TV show I watched. I hate. I watch the show now as an adult, and I'm like, <laughs> that card can't do that. It's just <laughs> like I just I put down. I destroy the moon, which means your your card loses 500. Like that's not what that card does. <laughs> um, but I, I with with going with what Nicholas is saying is is 100. percent I think also as a creator, um, I'll just say you just gotta you gotta try things out, and it's okay to fail. So. I'll, I'll, I will show. I will. I will share some fail. I will share a failure right now. Going back with that demons, my my series demons, with um. So like, how did I come up with this? Like, why did I come up with a character that could just like at the snap of his finger kill an entire room? Mm. Well, I wanted to show. I like that happening. I wrote it because I wanted. I want the reader to go. Oh shit! This guy is op. Mm-hmm. And and like I want to cause fear in the readers and go okay how is the character how are the characters gonna gonna survive this? Um, what I didn't do though was I didn't explain why the main bad guy just didn't do that to the main characters. Mm. Like everyone else was affected, why? Yeah. And so when someone brought that up, I went oh crap. So in the next issue, I kind of explained it, but as the reader, they can tell. The reader can tell. Oh, this wasn't planned. Yeah, it was, it was this random. Oh, oh, the reason why you can't get hurt is is because I cast a blessing from you, and um, devil powers can't go through blessings. Like, well, where did this come from? Right. Like, where, like, where did this like, where did this where did this come from? And then, kind of with the whole like, you know, they were like the anticipation of Super Saiyan. Um, this my the the way that my that my main character was able to beat this the like Satan's like set like right hand man um he um was he was able to like access like some like odd this like all god power and like like he turned into an angel and he had wings and he was given like some god sword and we didn't really bring we didn't lead up to it it just like it was just like 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 ace like we're, we're, we're losing this is what you have to do and it was like reading it now i'm like how did the like how did that person know this is what we had to do? Why didn't we say this earlier? Um and so those were flaws in my writing where I didn't tease out certain things mainly because I didn't plan it out. <laughs> well, I didn't plan it out well enough. It was like, "Oh yeah, I'm kind of like tra- I'm kind of trapped right now." Um which is also why I I I don't like draw- I don't like making super powered heroes and stuff because Yeah. It's, Cause you can get lost in that. Like you can yeah. really hurt yourself with those inconsistencies. And like Nicholas said, if, if you don't plan out or have somewhat kind of a plan, the reader will notice. And I might have the plan, but I'm, but because I'm so far ahead of the reader, I might not convey it in the totally. story. And they're like, where did this come from? I'm like, Oh, like you didn't know? I'm like, no, I'm not in your head. Like, right. I didn't know. And that, that's actually something I, I struggle with as a writer is, the whole like oh you didn't know that reader <laughs> duh <laughs> like you're not in my head idiot idiot you stupid <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it's i yeah so i i think just practice yeah and also kind of goes which means by the way get a get a get a friend or an editor to read mm. it because they're going to see it through the eyes of the, a reader and they'll be like that doesn't make sense and then they can hopefully call you out on it before you make the mistake of me putting out a graphic novel and people going, what is this? I went, I don't know. I don't know. What, what is it? <laughs> you tell me. Cool I, I think that's the hardest part though, is, is having um, feedback, having um, a readership um, and having them come back. And um, well, if it isn't Mr. Larry Higgins himself, Hell. it's on web 10. Where is my boy? It's on web 10. <laughs> how, how, you know, how many updates do you have planned? Um, I have, so as of right now, I've got, I think I have, so as of right now, I have banked up to episode eight mm. and then given the reception, we'll figure out like, I, cause I have, I have right now 22 episodes. 
Um, mm. All the pages are colored, but if if maybe people aren't like receiving certain things, I can change the text. Um, so instead of telling this like one million page massive like epic tale, it's kind of it's kind of like hinting. Uh oh, we lost Paul. Oh, the the guy running the show. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Draw and Talk. It's your boy Tyler. Today I have Nicholas. <laughs> it's going right into it. I guess I guess uh, something I, I kind of I didn't see coming, which is another thing as creators we learn we 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 don't I don't I didn't plan as well as I thought I did, is in Pasta La Vista I I, I basically. So like in Marvel Phase Two, that's when like they tease the Infinity Stones. Oh like, yeah. And but like they gave Marvel Phase One like a chance to let everything breathe. I yep. teased Infinity Stones in in my Iron Man in my very first book, oh. <laughs> and so. Um, Basically, I, 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 it's because if I don't finish that, then if I don't like finish that in future stories, then it's just a massive like plot, just massive plot hole. Like, where is this going? And we don't explain it. But I, I figured out a way that if, if it is like, if, if I do need to go, okay, just let's just leave chefs as a one shot, I can, I can explain it a different way because it's just art, right? Um, but yeah, I've got 20, uh, Pasta La Visa will be 22. Um, twenty-two weeks of updates. That's, that's, awesome. a, that's a good amount. That's a good amount. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot. I'm so, it is. I'm, I'm excited for more, though, for sure. For sure yeah, for sure. if uh, and we'll probably talk after uh, on the authors. We freaking better the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so the only reason I came on here is want to talk to no. you guys afterwards. No. I'm waiting for the after show. <laughs> yeah, I I only do streams for the after show. This is where we di- where we divulge and go. All right, guys, what are we really working on? <laughs> What's up with you? Yeah, no, I, 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 um, I think if you are scared with your power level, kind of going back to if you're scared about what, well, how do I do a power level? Talk to some readers, talk to people about it, because, I mean, if if I go, hey Nicholas, hey Paul, I've got this character and he can do this. Probably first thing you guys are gonna do go, oh, that's a really cool, that's a really cool idea. Um, well, what about this? And then yeah. that, that's when the other people will scrutinize because people are awful. And then you'll go, okay, mm. you're right. And that's when you can really figure it out. But if you don't have anyone challenging you, you end up having the Goku problem, which Goku is essentially the Dogecoin of manga, Dragon yeah. Ball Z. It's just, yeah. how can this keep going? And it and, is. <laughs> and I would recommend to to anyone who is listening or watching, uh, if you don't have anyone who's doing that, Find someone and tell them that you want them to do that because there are a lot of people there are a lot of people who will do it unsolicited with nothing but joy in their hearts, but there are also some people who may not cross that boundary until that door is open to them right to give you that feedback because you know I, we I think we've all had unsolicited feedback advice or requests that we maybe did not want to hear or did not need to hear at the time that we had to deal with them. Uh, job requests, people asking to write my book for me, things like that. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, op- open that door. Open that door to someone. If, if you are serious about this, open that door to someone who, who you trust in terms of quality of character and quality of a reader slash editor, uh, so that you can you can do that with your work and get multiple get multiple beta readers and edit you know maybe not all editors but multiple beta readers and one person you can trust for editing. Exactly, because yeah, an editor will kick your butt. <laughs> good, yeah, good one. Well, yeah. Um. So let's see here. Let me um, let me give you each a chance to uh, pitch what you got going on here. Let me bring first one back up here. Share screen, and then we will uh, <laughs> head on out. And yeah. we got chefs up here, and Tyler, go ahead, buddy. 
All right, guys. Uh, I'm just going to read what it says on the screen because it's easier. Uh, <laughs> my pitch is a little rusty. Chef's Culinary Heroes Earth Force follows the adventures of a team of superheroes who get their powers from culinary sources, led by Dairy King, who gets his powers from drinking milk. The chefs will have to battle many culinary villains in order to keep the world safe. So, guys, this was the hit Kickstarter that I canceled in five days. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, for various reasons, and uh, we put it out on webtoons. We wanted to see what see what this was like, see what the webtoons format was 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 like. And so far, we're having a silly goose time. It's cool to get the feedback. We uploaded three episodes um, last Friday. It's a good it's a good time for you to jump in, uh, read those read those first three episodes because we're going to be um, putting out another episode uh, this Friday. Um, and we put it out in the mornings, so I so, yeah. yeah. So we'll put it out in the morning. Uh, let's see what the what's the episode called? The episode. Let's see one two three. The episode's called uh, "Break Break a Noodle." So I love uh, it. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, uh, and we're gonna learn more about uh, Dairy King in the story. We're gonna see. We started out with we started the with a fight against noodle bandit in the last episode so we're going to see what happens at the end of that in the at the end of that battle and we're going to be introduced uh to some more characters in this episode so go check it out on webtoon it's free to read heck yeah why does every time i pull it up it makes me pay (laughs) am i on the right site are you on my two mix are you you on my two mix (laughs) mix. oh my gosh the amount of ads i get for that i'm like what's oh this is not what i was yeah only fans i do have an only (laughs) fans I just, I just don't post on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we got Nick here with Mr. 7000. Oh, hopefully Hunter it Raven. stays that way. Because I, I, I've, I've been... <laughs> dude, let's, been, dude, 48 no. hours? Come on, guys. We can get this to 8,000. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's marvelous. That is spec, spec, spectacular. And then after after 48 hours, in two weeks, we're going to Indiegogo. So, you know, it's... Just more bang for tired. your buck. You're gonna be so tired. I am. I'm past mm-hmm. that point. My kids are like, "When do we get to see you again?" I'm like, "Never." Remember so when never. stretch goals were a thing and we hadn't already crushed those? I didn't think we were even gonna get past one. I mean, last time I was like, ah, "Stretch goals." That's <laughs> okay, maybe. But um, so, so Nick, what what is Demon Hunter Raven? Why should uh, we back it? Um, you should back it because I like money and you don't like it. You should give me it. Mm-hmm. Five I know. To I know you got. I know you guys got your stimulus checks. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I saw a few of those come in today. That was definitely nice. There's um, some fourteen hundreds that could be added to this. Yes, yes. Let's add, let's make it that. up there. I, I'm going to go off on a tangent here because, um, so so I to you guys it'd probably be interesting, but I've been researching board games on Kickstarter lately, and Heck yeah. Oh my gosh, really? there was one. Yeah, there was one that hit 48 hours at the same time that I did. And, and it's it's backer count is seven thousand people right now. Oh, Nicholas, the um, there's a guy who lives over here. His name is Tanner Yarrow. Um, Brad Ashworth did a board game for him once, but he <laughs> he last year did a D and D type of board game, and it did a million dollars. And then his next one, and then his next what? one did nine hundred thousand dollars, and then his next one did like six hundred thousand. Huh? Oh my, yeah. See, it's almost up to seventy five hundred people now. So. Um, how, how are board games doing so good? I, I could show my stuff here, but I, I'm more about the the analysis of it right now. Like you know, <laughs> people that are doing really big on Kickstarter. Well, games. I, I can I say something that's going to sound really controversial. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. Right I now. I, so I, so a month ago. So it's been probably two three weeks since I canceled. <laughs> my my kickstarter yeah um and i said in the stream i said i i'm seeing i'm I'm not i'm not seeing readers really go to kickstarter yeah and then i said i said look at brian polito his campaign doesn't grow it's kind of just he has his set his set of fans and i said he will not break the three thousand um backer count again and it was only day one, and everyone and then the people in chat were like like lies tyler like lies well he's got two days left and if you look at backer kit, it's it, he he's not gonna he's not gonna do it. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not saying that no. it's bad, because like, what he's doing is awesome. Like I aspire. If I hit those numbers, gosh, I'd be. I'd yeah, who be, would be complaining? I wouldn't be complaining. But doing an analysis, if you're doing an analysis, yeah, 
he is not he's not seeing growth he doesn't need to see growth he has a he has a machine exactly. he knows i can get he knows these 3000 these 2900 people are i've got i've got them um but yeah board games are interesting now i will say my friend who did the the million asked about i asked i was like dude <laughs> hire me next time <laughs> um, <laughs> um but he he paid and he paid an ad agency company to help him so that's what they do is they they pay like these social media companies who have like proven okay. track records and mm-hmm. they he had to give like 25,000 up front wow and then and, and then after that it was an additional like percentage after that but it was a 25,000 but he was like man if he, but he but that's when he was like I believe in my product I know it's yeah. good I I'm willing to take the risk gives them 25,000 and um you know does a, does a million million dollar board game campaign i would love a billion million dollar board game campaign yeah well, and when he told me that and then when he told me the costs of each one to make it i was like get get out of here <laughs> oh, yeah, I right. it cheap. oh no it was cheap oh was it really it was it was it was uh, i'll just say i'll just say this he was <laughs> the average backer was paying around 50 to 70 dollars mm. yeah and it cost him three dollars to make it seven dollars to ship it was this like a card game or was it was it like a book a it's a book oh. it's a book it's a book this big but it lays out flat and it becomes your dungeons and dragons map oh okay but there was okay. also stickers that you could like place on it yeah because the one i'm looking at it's got full figurines and everything oh yeah and you so- know i tried to make one of the i tried to make a board game last year um and i went through the whole process and i even went through the company and they like showed me some they like told i so i got a quote and they're like i was like you're sweet and they go sweet so the board game they you give them the specs they're like yeah so it'll be fifteen thousand up front and i went yeah because i got I that have, much i have that <laughs> right now money i know about yeah. that stuff <laughs> um so that so um yeah board games if it, it's it's a huge risk <clears throat> board games are a huge risk um you gotta really believe it i mean the company I work for, my boss, him and his wife created a board game, and uh, let's just say we've got like ten thousand copies of that board game on our warehouse, and no one's buying it. Oh no! And uh, it takes up the most space. In fact, we had to lose. We had to like we needed more space, so we had to throw away three thousand of them just to create more space in our warehouse. Um, oh, he's he. Every time he looks at that that game, he's like, "Gosh, I I really thought <laughs> oh. it was a winner." <laughs> Uh, so it's a huge risk it's a huge risk that's another conversation though just proof of concept like how do you know like we we ourselves don't know if we have a hit on our hand it's it's the people will tell us and it's really hard to um like none of us are going to sit here and be like man i got i've got something on fire like i've got something what is yeah what's what is this so this is a board game i absolutely (sighs) love two million yeah uh go no kidding yeah, go to the uh, if it's on the app store. Like the base game is on the app store. This is the this well, is like the it? third or fourth expansion, depending on how you want to look at it. You say like app 2, store? Uh huh. So the base game is on the app store, and then they have the board game. But it's super fun. There's like wow. twenty different ways to play the game, depending on what faction you pick, and things like that. It is. Super hard to learn, but really fun once you pick it up. There's this game type for everybody, which is what I think leads to this two million dollar mark. Because if you want to be a, if you want to play Monopoly against someone else who's playing Risk, that's what you get with this game. This is the conversations, though. I mean, this like if you were like if like let's say Paul, you were to get this guy on your stream, you Mm -hmm. guys would talk. You guys would talk let's be real though he'll he's he'll he'll give you he'll give you the real details off stream because oh, yeah. yeah like they're they're like two million twenty two thousand people backing it yeah there's there's got oh hold on keep going down actually yeah. keep keep going down because yeah, how do you how do you get twenty two thousand people i'm i'm, I'm just wow. looking for a banner because any of those, anytime you work with an ad agency company, okay, so right there, look at that. Yep. The top, they, so they've already won awards. Yeah. So that's so that's proof of concept. They had to do that first. Keep going yep. down. Um. Keep going. Yeah, because sometimes there's going to be some sort of. 
advertisement. Coming about later. Here we go. Well, this is. Oh I mean, gosh, yeah. Look at the a, team behind hey, us. Yeah. So it's it's not just. This is a company. Oh yeah, it's a it's a whole company. Like okay, wow. yeah, yeah. They so like this, this isn't this hype. isn't just some like joe so that's why i was like i was like there's got to be a banner clearly these guys have play tested it they've done they've they've shown this to the right people they've oh, won yeah. tons of awards the game is fantastic it's uh-huh. so much fun and that's a risk though is you have yeah. a lot of people do try to do board games they see that two million but what they don't do is they don't do the analysis like we did a really quick one just now okay who are the players like if if i go oh i'm gonna make a board game i see the money like no there's there's a lot more um there's a lot more to it i mean look at i look at that look at how they do it with manga you got to do a one shot and you you got to win a contest first and then yeah. you've got to do a one shot yep um i mean it's 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 actually really crazy how they that they do it that they that's how they do it but it's so smart because it lets the readers decide if they want to do it i think marvel if marvel and dc were like you have to win a contest first and then they're ta- they would have top tier talent um, no, nah, nah, man, we need to put out different versions of Captain America right now. <laughs> the homosexual <Go> kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we all silent for 30 seconds. Right? <laughs> just... Moment of silence for Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers but, uh, to our boy. But yeah, uh, you know, either that. Todd, did you back the Dark Knight Returns board game? No, I did not. Send me a link like this. <laughs> is that still oh. up? One thing I will say though, and this is kind of like what's I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Paul. We're going I'm I should I'll stop. Dude, We're going quit apologizing. But <laughs> um, again, this is one of my favorite nights I've ever had. Trust look me. at look at rags. I look at I've been I've been reading rags, um and we'll probably talk about this off on the off air, but uh, with rags they they might not have had a good proof of concept maybe well you know i mean it was an, it was it's a compelling you know gin, naked ginger trying right, to right. get pants so it's it's compelling but i've known about rags for 2 years without even reading the comic because of all the amount the amount of fan art that luigi it's not even fan art cuz it's him but you saw R- metroid regina and you saw like Street Fighter Regina and Regina with Lady Death and Regina and like so like they do so much just like artwork on the character, just the character alone, not even the showing off the comic, just like pinups that I knew about Regina and Rags, like even before I read the comic. Yeah, that, mm. they they have some very good marketing behind them. Yeah, ex- exactly, and so. Um, I guess that I mean, I guess that's one way. I know, I know, I know. Uh, there's a Twitter account that I follow, and this person has like fifty thousand followers, and they love and like all he does is post like, all he does is post like his character, his OC. I don't know this OC's name. This OC's not anything. This original character's not anything. But people love his OC, and he's trying to do a comic right now. It's slowly, it's slowly like getting attention, but. Right now, people just love the character, so that that might be one route. You know, since we're talking about character development, is maybe to get people invested. Maybe before you get they get invested in your story, maybe you just get a pinup of your of, of your character, and then people go, "Oh, who's that?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you have to have enticing art, and I think we can all agree Luigi is top tier. In terms of, of getting to look at his stuff, I mean, incredibly talented. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I know he's alone brought in quite a few new people to my Kickstarter, so um, that's been I, a. I wonder how many people have found Common America just from the various variant art. Yeah, that they've yeah. done, and people go, "Oh, I love this variant art." Oh, who is that? Oh, that's Common America. Who's Common America? Well, let me yeah. tell you. Um, that's so how you get people to, to see it. You you got to hit other artists. You got to go to other people. Like yeah. when I got Dr. Eni to do the the sort of Marvel esque um, version of Raven, like that that got over five thousand likes on Instagram, and, and that just blew me up on, on in terms of when I was doing stuff. But again, it, it's getting people that that can be a double edged sword because then you got the people who are just like, oh, it's cool. They like that artist, but they never go outside of it to be like, yeah. Um, come and see it else but that actually did help because then i had people that saw me post and it also went like oh so this is who that guy's from um so 
it can be hit or miss. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So I made that strategy, guys, for for creators. If you have a create, if you have an OC, get like twenty. You know, save up some money. Yeah, get get a bunch of good artist to do some variant artwork eventually people are going to know oh that's so and so and then they're going to go where are they from seriously make, so yeah. worth it you can make so quite a bit of money off of it too if you sell it right yeah having having Joel back. Souza do Sunchild was such a blast and seeing Bill Jersey do him and and uh, I've got some other artists that oh, I'm, I'm looking to have you should have Joel So. You should ask. And I don't know if Joel Sozo would do this. I was actually going to ask him during my campaign, but then I, mm-hmm. I did what I did. Um, is if if he'll if he'll post about it on his Instagram story, your Kickstarter, because he has the swipe up function. Oh, does he? Yeah, he has over ten thousand followers, so he has the swipe up function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we'll... <clears throat> that's something I'm in. And that, that swipe up function only lasts for um, what's it called? In, in an hour, uh, twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's something story. that. Yeah, so that that's something you might want to hit him up on. Um, that's true. Right. My boss was like, "What's the what's the benefit of having ten thousand followers?" I'm like, "You get the swipe up function." He goes, "What's so great about that?" I'm like, "It's a direct link to whatever you're selling." <laughs> he yeah. goes, "He goes, oh, okay, that's kind of important." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a good idea. Yeah, I've got I've got nine thousand people more that I need to hit that. So you know. We're, get, we're getting there. We're you there. Got, got this. Five years later. I finally found your Instagram, though. I finally yeah, found it's... <laughs> Go you for posting on there. I don't post on Instagram. It's 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 a dead zone for me. I've I, but I found quite a few random people on there. But my 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 I use Instagram now merely as a um like an archive of like where I was and the things that I'm doing because I barely get any. I don't, I don't get any interaction on there. The the following count is a complete lie. The amount of people that actually see my stuff is like a hundred people. Oh, that, that's um, well, that uh, that's that's good. That's ten percent. That's what you should be getting. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm hitting that same now level with Facebook. Like it's just it's just cutting me in terms of be- people being able to see stuff. But I think probably posting five times in an hour is probably getting like this guy's kind of spammy. I don't. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cut him off. So I don't know. I'm annoyed. <laughs> so friends uh thank you so much for uh stopping by tonight and listening to uh tyler nick and i talk about uh character development and powers and things like that uh my name is paul tucker you can follow me at paul t writes on instagram and twitter i put my twitter in the chat you can check that uh you can follow my journey on writing and creating bump back a story about horror movie cannon fodder characters getting the chance to be the monsters who would usually be killing them or eating them for our entertainment and watch them turn themselves into a supernatural cover-up for slash apocalypse prevention team or you can follow uh probably what will be coming out first is my battle hippie uh who will be premiering in (laughs) chapter three of demon hunter raven the deluxe version uh, if you'd like to learn more about Sun Child, his chakrams, and the radiant aura, uh, please go back Demon Hunter Raven right now on Kickstarter. Let's get that baby up to 8,000. And uh, thank you again so much for watching, for commenting, for chatting us up in the chat. I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you for being good people. Thank you for who you are and who you choose to be. I hope that you have 14 unexpected reasons to smile tomorrow (laughs) and that your days are made brighter by the people who are in them have a great night friends thank you for stopping by that was the nicest outro